The whistleblowing website WikiLeaks has begun releasing a giant trove of confidential American diplomatic cables that's sending shockwaves through the global diplomatic establishment. The more than a quarter of a million classified cables were sent by U.S. embassies around the world, most of them in the past three years. WikiLeaks provided the documents to five newspapers in advance, The New York Times, The London Guardian, Germany's Der Spiegel, France's Le Monde, and Spain's El Pais. The revelations in the cables are extensive and varied. Among the findings, Arab leaders are privately urging the United States to conduct airstrikes on Iran. In particular, King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia has repeatedly called on the U.S. to attack Iran to destroy its nuclear program, reportedly calling on American officials to cut off the head of the snake. Jordan, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates also said they support a U.S. attack. The cables also highlight Israel's anxiety to preserve its regional nuclear monopoly, its readiness to go it alone against Iran, and its attempts to influence American policy. The cables also name Saudi donors as the biggest financiers of Sunni militant groups like al Qaeda. The cables also provide a detailed account of an agreement between Washington and Yemen to cover up the use of U.S. warplanes to bomb targets in Yemen. One cable records that during a meeting in January with General David Petraeus, the Yemeni president, Abdullah Saleh, said, quote, we'll continue saying they are our bombs, not yours. Among the biggest revelations is how the U.S. uses its embassies around the world as part of a global spy network. U.S. diplomats are asked to obtain information from the foreign dignitaries they meet, including frequent flyer numbers, credit card details, and even DNA material. The United Nations is also a target of the espionage, with one cable listing the information-gathering priorities to American staff at the U.N. headquarters in New York. The roughly half a dozen cables from 2008 and 2009 detailing the more aggressive intelligence collection were signed by Secretaries of State Condoleezza Rice and Hillary Clinton. The New York Times says the directives, quote, appear to blur the traditional boundaries between statesmen and spies. The cables also reveal that U.S. officials sharply warned Germany in 2007 not to enforce arrest warrants for CIA officers involved in an operation in which an innocent German citizen with the same name as a suspected militant was abducted and held for months in Afghanistan. The cables also document suspicions of corruption in the Afghan government. One cable alleges that Afghan Vice President Zia Massoud was carrying $52 million in cash when he was stopped during a visit to the United Arab Emirates. Only 220 cables were published by WikiLeaks on its website on Sunday, with hundreds of thousands more to come. The Obama administration has been warning allies about the expected leak since last week. A statement from the White House on Sunday said, We condemn in the strongest terms the unauthorized disclosure of classified documents and sensitive national security information. It also said the disclosure of the cables could deeply impact not only U.S. foreign policy interests, but those of our allies and friends around the world. For more, I'm joined for this hour by four guests. Karn Ross is with us. He's a British diplomat for 15 years who resigned before the Iraq War. He's the founder and head of a nonprofit diplomatic advisory group, Independent Diplomat. He's joining me here in New York in our studios, along with Greg Mitchell, who writes the Media Fix blog for The Nation, and before that was the longtime editor of Editor and Publisher magazine. Joining me via Democracy Now! video stream is Dan Ellsberg, perhaps the country's most famous whistleblower. He leaked the Pentagon Papers in 1971. We're also joined by Asada Bukhalil, a professor of political science at California State University, Stanislaus, and visiting professor at UC Berkeley. He's the author of The Battle for Saudi Arabia and runs the Angry Arab News Service blog. Dan Ellsberg, we're going to begin with you. Um, we were talking to you on October 20th on Democracy Now! when you were headed to London to participate in the WikiLeaks <coughs> news conference on the release of uh, close to 400,000 documents. What are your thoughts today? Well, this is totally a process, and this stage of the process has just begun. It's going to go on day after day after day. Uh, we've seen one out of a thousand so far of the cables that WikiLeaks is prepared to release. So it's uh, very early to judge, really, the value or the dangers, if any, of releasing that. Uh, back in uh, October, 
when we were releasing, uh, when he was releasing the, I think it was the Afghan documents at that point, uh, they were still new to the process and I think made some mistakes in terms of releasing some names that they shouldn't have released at that point and were properly criticized for that. As a result, uh, it appears that the last batch before this one was redacted fairly heavily by uh, Assange, by WikiLeaks, uh, with the result that when the Pentagon said that there were 300 names that were endangered by that release, they said right away, uh, based on their own files and their own knowledge of the cables, it turned out within a couple of days that WikiLeaks had released none of those names, that none of those had all been redacted and they were all endangered, uh, not endangered. The upshot right now appears to be that as of now, with the hundreds of thousands of documents that uh, WikiLeaks has put out, the Pentagon has had to acknowledge that not one single informant or soldier has been endangered. In fact, they haven't even had felt the need to protect one or to inform one that he, was, he or she was endangered. So that risk, which we're hearing again now, right now, has obviously been very largely overblown and there's a lot of blather. Greg Mitchell, you've been tweeting this uh, since it came out yesterday, 1.30 in the afternoon on Sunday, uh, Eastern Standard Time, uh, the beginning of the release of the documents. Um, first of all, talk about their significance, what they are, um, what are the different places they are from? Well, they're from 79 different embassies from around the world, so it really, of course, is quite unprecedented. And as Dan said, the way this is different from the previous WikiLeaks, uh, when they came out on the Iraq War and on Afghanistan, those were basically one-day stories. They were gigantic uh, document dumps, uh, got massive media coverage for a day or so, and then it was pretty much over. This is going to be uh, emerging over the next uh, uh, nine days, for example, in the New York Times. And uh, WikiLeaks on their own site has said it's going to go on for months. So it is a little early to, to say exactly what, uh, you know, what the effects are going to be, uh, what the downside might be, and, and the revelations are already quite significant. And we're, and we're already seeing some of the uh, outlets are summarizing some of the uh, revelations yet to come. So when you read some, even some of the things you read at the top of the hour, they <laughs> actually are not cables that have been released yet, but some of the media outlets are kind of previewing what's coming. Interestingly, um, there is a file on BitTorrent um, in case the full release doesn't go forward for some reason. The file's encrypted, but all that needs uh, that's needed to decrypt it is a passphrase, which will be released in the worst-case right. scenario. Well, what's also different about this release is that uh, even in the previous releases, WikiLeaks did uh, work closely with news organizations. But here, they gave the uh, news organizations these files very early on. And the news organizations have uh, gone to the, uh, at least the New York Times has gone to the administration, has run names past the, the State Department, and has redacted many of the documents, which then WikiLeaks has then taken redacted documents, and these are among the over 200 they've already posted. So in a sense, uh, WikiLeaks is, is, is letting the news media help them in making sure these documents are safe. So I would, I would imagine that as they emerge, there's going to be uh, even fewer worries about what might be in them than, than might have been in the past. We're going to break and then come back to this discussion for the hour. Um, this is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report.